One thing I wanted to talk to you about today is the Roger Federer example. So I heard an interview with him, ten, say it was 10 years ago, and he was asked, who do you admire most as an athlete? And his answer was Tiger Woods. And that was the end of the question and answer, and I was really curious about this. Well, fast forward five years, and in those intervening five years, Roger Federer had become widely sort of appreciated as the best tennis player of all time. Yeah. And then he was asked, well, why did you choose uh, Tiger Woods as the answer to that question and, he, and his response was because at the time of my career I knew on any given day I, I could show up and I could win I could beat anyone but what was unfathomable to me is to be able to do that week after week after week year after year which I saw Tiger Woods doing and that was like that's why I admired that skill set at the time, at the time, right. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's probably what provoked the question of him, you know? It's a sort of a juicy question. But if we take a step back from the juiciness of it and sort of understood what he, understand what he was really saying, it's that he came to the realization that we've been talking about that it's not just how you train and how you perform during your training that impacts your performance. It's how you're managing your mindset throughout every moment of every day. So it's when you come into awareness of yourself as that person who not only achieves that goal once, right, wins the Iron Man, but the person who dominates for five years, when you think of yourself as I am the best of all time, and that thought process is instilled and eventually, because you do it enough embodied in you, then you start to move towards doing that very regularly. So it's not just on the days that you perform, but it's how you are with other people, it's how you are in the rest of your life. And what I find really um, compelling and motivating about this example, you know, beyond the obvious, is that when you look at the guys that came after Federer, like uh, Djokovic and Nadal, they are now hot on the trail of becoming the best of all time, especially Djokovic. Nadal's had some injuries, right? So you, what you can observe is they looked at this guy who was a few years ahead of him, observed how he prepares, how he performs, and adopted that mindset. And to me, that's so cool because it shows that the way that you do this in your own life impacts all of the people around you. It raises the level of everyone that you're working with. And I don't just mean in your uh, athletic life, but your personal life, right? you're um, embodying and, and demonstrating to people what you're doing without even describing it, right? Because they can see your level of performance. So that to me was really inspiring and it was a really great description to me of why mind exercise works. Now, Roger Federer might not consider that mind exercise, but to me, everything that you're doing that is listening to and becoming aware of what's flowing into your inner dialogue is mind exercise. Now, we do it specifically and strategically through 10 steps, but you'll remember that from step one, our real main theme is to master your mindset throughout every day, every moment of your life, right?